so now we are going to discuss about the atrial fibrillation so atrial fibrillation is also known as afib in short and it is an abnormal heart rhythm in which there is rapid and irregular beating of the atria as the muscle fibers all are contracting at a different time so when all the muscle fibers are contracting at a different time and there is no uh, single focus on which the atrium are contracting so that will lead to a quering or twitching movement so now we will see what exactly happens in atrial fibrillation so in normal condition as we already know this is uh, the heart uh, diagram so in that you can see in normal conditions SA node will fire the impulse and impulse will start from SA node and it will spread towards both the right atrium and left atrium simultaneously and it causes the depolarization of the atria before reaching the uh, AV node so that will lead to the contraction of both atria when SA node impulse will start it will lead to the contraction of both atrias and causing depolarization and it occurs in an organized manner as the impulses are uh, carrying in an organized and concentric and unified contraction will be there so both the atria will uh, contract like simultaneously but here what happens in atrial fibrillation patient the impulses signals moves in an unorganized manner because there are multiple wavelets form here so there are various uh, you can say foci can be formed which uh, leads to the different refractory period and which cause the failure of atria to contract in an organized manner so it leads to the spasm of the atrium muscles leading further to querying of the atrium so this exactly uh, is the baseline or you can say the underlying uh, mechanism that occurs in a AFib patient now we will compare the ECG of a normal patient uh, normal person with that of a atrial fibrillation patient so as you can see on the ECG on the second number lead uh, the PQRST interval is normal you will see this kind of ECG on a normal second number uh, lead on ECG but in atrial fibrillation AFib patient on same uh, lead you will see this kind of ECG so in this you can easily see that there is no P wave no P waves are formed and also there is irregular baseline the baseline will be irregular due to multiple focuses uh, or foci are generating impulses and also the QRS is normal but in this condition QRS is normal because the, the AV node because of the refractory uh, period of the AV node it will send the impulse to the ventricles and they will depolarize in a normal manner but also the irregular RR distance with every cycle so there will be irregular distance like in some uh, at some time it will be the impulse will be sent early or it may be uh, a little bit of late so uh, in that condition there will be different RR interval as you can see here and the, due to these irregular intervals there will be fluctuation in the uh, beats per minute that will be 100 to 175 beats per minute uh, which will lead to the ventricle rapid contraction and also in precordial V1 chest lead uh, the atrial fibrillation patient ECG will mimic the atrial flutter so it will uh, show something like this like uh, as we have discussed in atrial flutter patients so what is the etiology and what are the main causes that can lead to the at atrial fibrillation exact mechanism is not known but there are certain risk factors for example increase in age can cause if uh, afib in a patient also any disease that cause inflammation of the atrium hypertrophy of the atrium that can lead to increase in blood pressure and metal stenosis also alcohol abuse acute hyperthyroidism any surgical procedure or it can also be anemia in some cases so these are the main etiological factors which can lead to the formation of the atrial fibrillation so now we will see a deep underlying pathology so as we have discussed all these risk factors as they can cause stress so all these risk factors uh, which we have discussed on the previous page like increase in age any disease causing inflammation hypertrophy of atrium alcohol abuse acute hyperthyroidism any surgical procedure so all these can uh, lead to the stress or uh, they can cause stress to the atrium so whenever the atrium is stress it can lead to a phenomena known as t tissue heterogeneity so tissue heterogeneity means that the atrium cells acquires different uh, properties that is all of them have different refractory period so some cells might uh, uh, contract at a faster rate some cells might contract at a slower rate so when one cells 
may contract faster as compared to the another so there is irregularity and unpredictable movement of the impulses so there will be irregularity and unpredictable movement of the impulses so this can be due to mainly multiple focuses are formed as in the atria as you can see in this diagram there are multiple wavelets are formed multiple wavelets uh, are formed so these multiple focuses can lead to the multiple erratic impulses uh, which are generated which can further lead to irregular atrial contraction also uh, there is a uh, point like near the pulmonary veins uh, there is a specific area in the cardiac muscle around the pulmonary vein where there can be arising of automatic focuses so automatic focuses can be formed at that area at that point and it will override the impulses of SA node so SA node impulses will be override by these uh, automatic focus that are formed near the pulmonary veins that can also lead to the atrial fibrillation so patient firstly starts with paroxysmal atrial uh, fibrillation in which the afib comes and goes like it will uh, not uh, be having more than one week like it will not be lasting for more than one week so before one week it will be terminated but if it continues then it can cause further stress to the atrium uh, musculature and uh, then there will be increased stress in the atrial cells and it will lead further to the calcium overload in these cells so whenever calcium is accumulating more and more in these cells it can lead to progressive fibrosis or scar formation so there will be progressive fibrosis and scar formation on the atrial cells which will lead to persistent atrial fibrillation so it is the time period of this is occurring it is uh, more than one week or it can be up to months so it will not uh, self terminate so we have to provide medication for that and uh, after that also if it will uh, not stop uh, eliminating like atrial fibrillation is not uh, uh, controlling and it will go up to more than 12 months then we can consider it is at low standing persistent atrial fibrillation or permanent atrial fibrillation now we will see about the uh, further symptoms what are the symptoms uh, that will be occurring in the patient with atrial fibrillation so the normal symptoms are general fatigue will be there dizziness can be there shortness of breath generalized weakness palpitations can also be felt and also pulmonary congestion and one of the most severe uh, complication that can occur in a AFA patient is stroke as the atria are not pumping the blood properly as the atria are not pumping the blood properly so the blood can stagnates in the atrium the blood can uh, stays in the atrium and then blood clots can be formed so this blood can go to the brain and it can cause stroke so this is the major complication that occurs in a atrial fibrillation patient so what is the treatment the main goal of treatment is to prevent circulatory instability and stroke so the main goal of treatment is to prevent any kind of circulatory instability and also stroke so first of all anticoagulants are used to prevent formation of clots which will prevent stroke like uh, i have already told you about the complication stroke so anticoagulants will be used to prevent formation of clots which will prevent further stroke so in anticoagulants we can use warfarin heparin epixaban warfarin heparin and epixaban can be used and also to prevent circulatory instability there is generally a criteria like we have to uh, there are two methods one is rate control and one is rhythm control in rate control basically the medications are used which works by increasing the degree of block at AV node so if uh, we will block the impulses at the AV node itself then the further it will not lead to ventricular tachycardia so in that way some medications are used that will uh, increase the degree of block at AV node so there is decreased number of impulses conducted into the ventricles so these can be beta blockers that are metoprolol or atenolol metoprolol or atenolol calcium channel blockers like deltazem and very pamil etc and cardiac glycoside can also be used for example digoxin so this is controlling the rate of the impulses via blocking av node but another method is rhythm control in rhythm control method or we can say cardio version uh, the irregular heartbeat is changed to the normal heartbeat so it can be done by either electrical or uh, we can say by chemical method so electrical there is direct current shock is given to restore the normal rhythm of the heart 
सो इन दिस कंडीशन डायरेक्ट डी सी करंट डी सी शॉक इज गिवन टू रिस्टोर द नॉर्मल रिदम ऑफ द हार्ट एंड बट इट कैन ऑल्सो बी डन द कार्डियो वर्जन कैन ऑल्सो बी डन विद केमिकल लाइक विद ड्रग्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल एमिडोरोन एंड प्रोकेनामाइड एंड ड्रोनीडरोन सो दीज ड्रग्स कैन ऑल्सो बी गिवन फॉर द कार्डियो वर्जन और द चेंजिंग द इेगुलर बीट इन टू द नॉर्मल वन नाउ इफ दिस विल ऑल्सो नॉट वर्क देन वी कैन फर्दर डू रेडियो फ्रिक्वेंसी कैथेटर एबलेशन सो वट इज दिस दैट सम एरियाज आर डिस्ट्रॉयज सो दैट देर इज लेस प्रोपेगेशन ऑफ सिग्नल्स सो एज यू कैन सी इफ दिस इज द बोथ एट्रियम सो दिस इज द वेंट्रिकल्स एंड दिस इज द एट्रियम्स सो रेडियो फ्रीक्वेंसी कैथेटर एप्लेशन वी विल डिस्ट्रॉय सम एरियाज सो दैट देर विल बी लेस देर विल बी लेस इम्पल्स लेस इम्पल्स दैट विल गो टू द ए वी नोट सो वी विल डिस्ट्रॉय सम एरियाज इन द एट्रियम टिश्यू सो दैट देर विल बी लेस प्रोपेगेशन ऑफ द सिग्नल्स एंड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमन एग्जाम्पल इज मेज मेज प्रोसीजर दैट मीन्स दैट ए मेज इज क्रिएटेड एबलेशन मेज इज क्रिएटेड इन ऑर्डर दैट the impulses will be conducted in a specific manner only so the impulses will be carrying out through this maze only and then they will reach the av node so this is one of the most famous uh, radio frequency catheter ablation method maze procedure also av node ablation can also be done and uh, that means that we have to cut all it will cut all the impulses that transfer from atrium to the ventricles so av node ab ablation can be done so it will block all the impulses going from atrium to the ventricles so in these patients we have to further use pacemakers so that's all for atrial fibrillation